we, we struggle in quality across the country. There are plenty of great health systems doing really interesting and important work. But as a country, as a nation, we still struggle with improving quality and right. clinical outcomes and safety. Uh, cost fluctuates anywhere from 17 to 21 percent of the GDP, depending on the year. So cost has been very stubborn to lower. I believe that AI, both for Florida Health Sciences Center, Tampa General, and for the nation, I think we can increase quality, lower cost, pass that value on to the consumer of healthcare through those types of improvements. And I think AI is a very important tool in that journey. It's gonna absolutely improve the care, the clinical outcomes, the experience for the patient. It's going to do that by making our physicians more efficient and effective, by making our nurses and allied health professionals more efficient and effective. So basically it talks about how artificial intelligence is transforming industries at an unprecedented pace. A recent survey conducted by Duke University and the Federal Reserve of Atlanta found that nearly half of the finance chiefs and large U.S. firms plan to implement AI within the next year to automate tasks such as paying suppliers, managing invoices, and financial reporting. This shift is not limited to administrative tasks, but also creative roles are also being affected, with AI being used to write job postings, press releases, and marketing campaigns. And it's pretty handy. Experts like Duke Finance Professor John Graham emphasize that AI can enhance product quality, boost output, and reduce labor costs. However, this also raises concerns about job displacements. While some believe the impact on employment will be gradual, others worry about the potential for significant job losses immediately. Hoffman predicts job transformations over the next few years with AI serving as a co-pilot to humans rather than a standalone replacement. So the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellman and a report by the Democratic Senator Gary Peters have both highlighted the need for robust regulatory framework to address the risk associated with AI adoption, particularly in the financial sector. Tesla is go eventually going to surpass the $1 trillion uh, market cap. I think ultimately right now, Tesla is the most undervalued AI play in the market. I believe the AI component of Tesla could be worth one to two trillion alone. Because I, Tesla is an autonomous AI company, mm -hmm. it does disruptive tech. And I think we will be looking at ultimately a stock that could potentially double over the next 12, 18 months. But I guess the bigger takeaway from that regard is there's multiple ways for him to get there. And they touched on it on the tail end. And that's the reduction in workforce. So he's not paying people. He was able to eliminate probably a, a, a large portion of his payroll automated with AI. You don't have to robots. pay that technology with robots. You don't have to pay that technology. And they're working around the clock. You can see the tentacles from SpaceX to Twitter X AI and then Tesla, how he is gathering a lot of this information. And especially if you can go autonomous in definitely automobile, automobiles with taxis. And I know they have it somewhat on Tesla now. And he was saying that the, and this is where everybody has to change their mindset. Everybody thinks that the AI has to be the smartest person on earth. No, it needs to be smart enough as the average person. It will get to a point where it will be smarter than any person on this earth but it just needs to get to where it's at the average of where everybody is in this world. So Citigroup has released a comprehensive report indicating that artificial intelligence is set to displace more jobs in the banking industry than any other sector. Despite concerns about job displacements, Citigroup's Citigroup chief technology officer, David Griffith, emphasized the potential of generative AI to revolutionize banking operations while underlining the importance of responsible AI implementation. Imagine a future where computers interact with us just like humans can. Digital humans will revolutionize industries from customer service to advertising and gaming. And they'll even be AI brand ambassadors. 
The foundation of digital humans are AI models built on multilingual speech recognition and synthesis, and LLMs that understand and generate conversation. We have rich ceremonies and traditional dances, and we honor nature. Nvidia Ace is a relief out of the system, and that will translate into savings. Savings in money, savings in energy. And that's the reason why you've heard me say, the more you buy, the more you save. <laughs> <laughs> CEO math is not accurate, but it is correct. The more you buy, the more you save. <laughs> The software has to be completely rewritten, so that you could refactor, re-express the algorithms that was written on a CPU, so that it could be accelerated, offloaded, and run in parallel. Of course, the very famous CUDNN, the deep learning library that processes neural networks. That CUDA software that's running on their particular NVIDIA chips has changed the game. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Any final thoughts before we jump? Senator Ted Cruz aims to hold big tech accountable for AI deep fakes. Senator Cruz um, has taken the initiative to introduce legislation aimed at providing additional safeguards for those affected by deep fake pornography. So Thursday, tune in. As we all are aware, it's the first presidential debate with President Biden and, and President Trump should be very entertaining to say the least. We're here to give you the facts to the best of our abilities lever leveraging AI technology. Intersection between politics and artificial intelligence. The finding, more than a quarter of the election information shared by popular AI language models is factually incorrect. Morgan, that's a pretty significant number of incorrect information. What more can you tell us? Google's Gemini and OpenAI's ChatGPT. It gave factually incorrect answers to questions about the 2024 election about 37% of the time. We're talking incorrect answers on average. We're talking all five of the learning models that are popular, that were tested. They answered wrong more than a quarter of the time, meaning it only answered correctly 73% of the time. Can I register to vote on election day in Pennsylvania? No, that's the answer. But when it came to AI, two of those AI models says yes, which is incorrect. Then they asked how old presidential candidates Joe Biden and Donald Trump are. The answer is 81 and 87. But they got, got different answers every time they submitted these questions. In fact, one language model got Biden's age wrong four times in a row. And then when they okay. asked the most okay. basic question, how many days are left before the 2024 general election in the United States? Not a single one was able to correctly answer this kind of obvious and basic question. One in five Americans have used at least one of these language models, and that number, of course, is growing each year. Google confirms that those results are powered in part by Gemini, but the company does say it has restricted them when it comes to the election information. Researchers say this study should serve as a warning to all companies considering whether or not to use AI-assisted because it's still a, a learning language model. Wow. I wasn't surprised that Jim and I came and <laughs> had the, the worst percentage. I'm surprised because they have access to the most data. So you're getting biased information as well. But those are very general questions that they asked that I thought they would have. I mean, maybe Wikipedia could have provided better answers, but not for sure. But nonetheless, we're still going to use tech. We're still going to use AI on our I feel that it's going to create a false sense of security in two ways. First, it's people who go, oh, it's junk, and just ignore it. And then it, in a year, two years, or whatever that time period is going to happen, then you, you get your pink slip, you've been replaced by AI. Two is that uh, you're using it, you're enthused about it, you want to become that power user. You've got to understand to val so like perplexity, and a lot of them do it now. They give the sources. Go to the sources because sometimes they scrape the sources and they didn't uh, capture the whole thing in its entirety. You're going to have to go and then pop over and look at the actual citing of sources. Perplexity. And I asked Perplexity how many days until the election. Perplexity responded, 
need more information. What election are you talking about? So I said, okay, ah. the president. So I said, how many days until the presidential election? It says to calculate those number of days until the presidential election, you'll use the given current date of today, which is June 25th, 2024, and the election date of November the 5th, 2024. He said the presidential election will take place on November 25th. So when you start counting the days from now, June has five remaining days. July has 31 remaining days, has yeah. 31 days. August has 30 days. September has 30 days. October has 31 days. And it says November has five days up to the election. So when you add those all together, it's 133 days until the election. It decided to end its AI powered drive through ordering system after a series of challenges and humorous mishaps. So there's a little humor in here, but in the short, McDonald has been testing an AI driven automated order taking system in collaboration with IBM since 2021. The technology was implemented in over a hundred restaurants across the United States, aiming to streamline operations and improve service speed. However, the trial has not met expectations <laughs> leading to the decision to discontinue the use of this technology. The AI system, it was designed to process orders using voice recognition, face significant issues with order accuracy. Customers reported numerous errors such as being charged for excessive items or receiving incorrect orders. The mishaps has been widely shared on social media with viral videos showcasing the AI's amusing blunders, including orders from bacon topped ice cream, <laughs> which I wouldn't want to exuberant bills for chicken nuggets. I'm a human and sometimes I have challenges understanding others. And so I can only imagine what the technology itself was faced and tasked with, especially with all of the outside noise surrounding it. So that it, does it have the noise cancellation features to hone in on exactly what's in front of them? Staff are sabotaging sometimes technology. Never can prove it, but <laughs> I could see these well, McDonald's people probably could be potentially sabotaging it, but also it could be bad technology. Some of that voice recognition software, everybody says it's my software is the best. It can do whatever. And then you put in real world application and it fails. I have a feeling that they're going to look at somebody else or multiple vendors. That's a large sample size. Maybe it's not in the grand scheme of things for McDonald's. There's probably hundreds of thousands of McDonald's restaurants throughout the mm -hmm. world. So they had it deployed in over a hundred restaurants throughout the States. I wonder if it varied from restaurant to restaurant right. based off of geography it was placed. So I would like to have more data to dive into around yeah. the overall experiences. If it was the Southern locations, you may have deep Southern accents that it struggled with. If it was in the North, they talk fast. Right. So there's varying factors which could have impacted this, but nonetheless, it was a failed venture. It wasn't a success, but they're going back to the drawing board. drive throughs I've noticed that they pop up exactly what you've ordered. They'll read it back. So is AI reading it back? What other safeguards are they putting in place for that experience? Um, Noisy you know, car, a lot yeah. of noise, if there's construction going on, cars, ambulances um, coming through automated. And we're talking to chat bots. They understand what we're saying a lot more clear than it looks, sounds like this experience at McDonald's. See, like Chick-fil-A, they do theirs differently. A lot of times, especially in a busy time, they have the people out there right by the Correct. car and just keying it in, get your credit card. They have definitely modeled the drive through experience there. They mastered, the they mastered the art of customer service right. and the customer experience. And, and you're willing to pay a little more for that. Others should look more so into that.